So after making the red velvet cake, we had a whole bunch of beets left over. And beet juice. So we decided to make borscht. This week on Working Class Foodies. Borscht is an Eastern European dish, and there are as many recipes for borscht as there are people who make it. The one constant ingredient in borscht is beets. A lot of borscht recipes are kind of kitchen sink recipes. They include everything from cabbage to beans, to potatoes know, or meat on the bone right or ground sausage yeah. basically anything so long as there's beets it's borscht we wanted to make a simple easy borscht and we wanted to really focus on the beets to make this borscht preheat your oven to 400 degrees rinse one to two pounds of whole beets season them with oil salt and pepper wrap them in tin foil and put them in the oven for about 40 minutes or until tender. Shake out till he takes me home. When your roasted beets are knife tender, let them cool for a few minutes, then use the tin foil to rub off the skins. Then we chop the beets into cubes and set them aside. Someone leave them alone. Meanwhile, make your borscht. We use our leftover pre-cooked peeled beets from our red velvet cake episode. If you don't have pre-cooked peeled beets, that's totally fine. You can start with whole fresh beets. Rinse them, put them in a pot, cover them by about an inch with water, and let them simmer for about 45 minutes or until they're tender. Strain and reserve both the beets and the liquid. You're going to want both of these for making your borscht. When your beets are cool enough, peel them and then quarter them. Well, I think to start the borscht, chop half an onion Live out in the open. Let it know. And two cloves of garlic. Spring do some good for me and grow. Put them in a pan over medium heat. And sweat until translucent. At this point, we grated in about a tablespoon of fresh ginger. and season the onions and the garlic with salt and pepper. Add the beets and their juice and one quart of stock and bring to a simmer. And this can be vegetable stock, chicken stock, beef stock, veal stock, whatever you have on hand, preferably homemade, whatever flavor you want the most. And if you don't have stock, you could definitely do it with water too. Yeah, it'll just, you wanna add a little more seasonings at the end. Yeah. Bring to a boil and then turn it immediately down to a simmer and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Once your borscht has simmered for 15-20 minutes, turn off the heat and puree your borscht, either using an immersion blender or doing it in batches in a blender. If you're going to use a blender, be very careful because the borscht is really hot. Only add it in about a cup at a time and do it in batches, otherwise you could blow the top off your blender and burn yourself. Add a tablespoon of vinegar and any fresh herbs you want to add at this point. We added a little bit of dill. Quit looking. Then it was time to serve our borscht. We topped our borscht with some plain local yogurt, some of the cubed roasted beets, a drizzle of good olive oil, and some fresh cracked salt and pepper with a sprig of dill on top. It was delicious. What I love about this recipe is that it's not only easy to throw together, it looks really beautiful. And it's the perfect thing for this time of year where it's still cold out and you want a hearty, warm winter dish. But it's almost springtime. You want to put a little color back into your food and you want to, you know, maybe get lighten it up a little bit. And the other great thing about borscht is you could serve it hot or cold. Either way, it's delicious. We got six generous servings of borscht out of this recipe and the total cost came down to $8.50. And that's including the tablespoon or two of yogurt that we used. Came down to about $1.40 per person. It's a fantastic lunch and you can serve it hot or cold, depending on what the weather's like outside. It's awesome. It's awesome. So that's how we made our borscht. Now, like I said in the beginning, everybody has a different recipe for borscht, and we'd love to see what yours is. So please share it with us in the comments below, and we'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies.
check out some of our other episodes to find recipes that would go great with this dish by clicking any of these boxes around my face.